Good morning. Uh, we were discussing about the various uh, substations, uh, particularly the gas insulated substation, the air insulated and the hybrid uh, type of substations which are recently being uh, used uh, for the EHV and UHV uh, voltage levels. Now, we will discuss about uh, the important components of the switch yard in a substation. So, we have uh, discussed earlier various components, important components like the bus bar, disconnector, the circuit breakers, current transformers, voltage transformers, uh, the earthing switches and surgeries. These are the various uh, components in any typical uh, switch yard of a EHV or any high voltage uh, HV AC or HV DC substation. We will uh, look into the various uh, functions of the components which are being uh, installed in any substation. So, the, the main uh, important component being the bus bar. So, this uh, bus bar, the main function of the bus bar is to connect and deliver the loads or transmission the loads to the required uh, centers. Then we have a disconnector switch. The disconnector switch, the main function of the disconnector switch is to connect and disconnect the circuit, uh, disconnect the circuit for the maintenance or uh, for any upgradation of the equipments in the substation or any uh, uh, important uh, changing over of the equipment or changing of the relays and so on. The third being the circuit breaker, circuit breaker is an important uh, component as mentioned earlier. So, the important function of a circuit breaker is to connect the circuit uh, for normal operating conditions. Then uh, disconnect in case of the uh, over voltages or uh, during the uh, fault conditions. And the main uh, other function of the circuit uh, breaker is also to detect the faults and uh, operate accordingly. Then we have two important uh, uh, information uh, uh, components. One is the current transformer and uh, the other uh, being the voltage uh, uh, or a potential uh, transformer. So, these mainly detect uh, the information and try to transform the information either in a current or a voltage uh, to the uh, control uh, uh, unit or in case of a SCADA the information is being fed to the control center. So, similarly, we have a earthing switch, earthing switch again uh, this is being used mainly for uh, the protection and also for the safety aspects uh, in case of any changing of the equipments in the substation the earthing switch is kept open and the equipment is being uh, attended to. So, then the finally, uh, we have discussed uh, in the last class about the uh, lightning arrestor or the surge arrestor. The surge arrestor is a very important component uh, and it quenches the uh, surges or a lightning uh, or a switching surges and protects the major equipments like the transformer, circuit breakers uh, and other uh, relays and controls in the substation. So, these are the important uh, components in any uh, switch yard of uh, uh, high voltage or uh, EHV uh, substation. So, the preventive maintenance of these uh, components is essential at a regular intervals. So, that the performance of these uh, components or performance of these equipments uh, over a long period of time has to be uh, uh, seen to be considered in the field. So, the bus bars, the bus bars are along uh, heavy tube tubular uh, structures in any uh, substation. So, these bus bars or overhead uh, ground wires, these are the bus bars in any uh, substations. So, these bus bars at least once a year uh, visible inspection is to be carried out regular intervals in examining of all the wiring connections which are uh, connected to the bus bar, the end connections uh, of the bus bar. To it, it has to be properly checked uh, whether the following insulator support, the insulators may be of a pedestal or uh, a long rod type of insulators. So, these have to be uh, verified and the uh, contamination or uh, the spread on the insulator surface have to be uh, cleaned at a regular intervals or if necessary uh, a suitable high voltage insulating coating if required has to be applied uh, on uh, these insulators in case of any uh, necessity. So, we uh, the 
physical condition of this uh, cables or the bus bars have to be attended at a regular uh, time period uh, to check their uh, physical conditions uh, particularly as these are uh, operating in the open uh, environmental condition the effect of corrosion or uh, any other uh, because of oxidation. So, a proper uh, check is essential uh, for the bus bars. Similarly, for the ground uh, wires which are being connected a proper a uh, check or the testing of the grounding system. So, we will be discussing about the grounding system in detail in uh, uh, a later uh, uh, lecture, but the very important is to see the ground wires are also being attended to. Then comes the disconnector or the earthing switch. So, this uh, disconnector switch comprises of a, a moving uh, contact with the flexible uh, fingers as shown. Again, uh, this uh, disconnector switches vary uh, with the different uh, uh, voltage uh, levels, uh, various types of uh, connector switches are being employed uh, at uh, uh, different voltage levels. So, these disconnecting switches have to be attended at least uh, once a month, a proper visible uh, inspection has to be made and uh, a necessary check has to be maintained for the heating resistor, particularly the near the contacts. Uh, at its control panel or uh, whether there is a proper functioning or uh, the contacts have been uh, corroded or uh, it needs uh, inspection and also some remedial action to be uh, done. So, a regular maintenance apart from a regular maintenance of monthly once at least once in a year the following have to be attended that is the contacts of the disconnector uh, switches and the earthing uh, switches have to be properly cleaned up and uh, the electrical contact grease if necessary has to be applied uh, for the smooth contact and uh, to see the corrosion uh, formation uh, near the contact or on the contact is happening. Then the disconnector switches are to be checked uh, particularly at the joints uh, near the joints where the bearings of the opening and closing uh, of the unit. Uh, is uh, uh, required. So, this will help uh, to check the flexible uh, connections of earthing switches also. Then all the important uh, joints uh, particularly uh, the joints uh, for the uh, unit have to be properly uh, tightened and the insulators which are uh, supporting this uh, disconnector switches have also be have also to be uh, cleaned at a regular intervals and any excess amount of uh, pollutant or uh, contaminant has to be uh, which has been accumulated has to be cleaned uh, so that the surface discharges on this uh, uh, support insulator never happens so the regular maintenance uh, has to be uh, carried out for the smooth functioning of uh, the disconnector switches then we have uh, the two important components the voltage uh, transformer or the potential transformer and the current transformer. So, the voltage transformer at least once a month we have uh, the inspection is essential uh, to see that the voltage divider to be sure that uh, there is no oil leak uh, particularly uh, um, which is a serious uh, because uh, this oil leak or a serious accumulation of soot, dust or salt composite could be present to uh, it has to be removed. So, that is the reason for uh, uh, to see the maintenance has to be carried out at uh, least a month. So, inspect the intermediate voltage transformer and it has to be checked for the minimum permissible oil level has to be maintained in the uh, 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 voltage and also the current transformers. And at least once in a year we have to check all the joints and the contact points for that there is no loosening of the uh, uh, contacts and the all the insulators which are again uh, uh, associated with this um, uh, cities have to be properly uh, uh, cleaned uh, so that the dirt accumulation is uh, not uh, being uh, uh, done on the surface of the insulator which will again uh, during the uh, monsoon condition there is likelihood of uh, the discharges because of the surface contamination this has to be avoided. And uh, the voltage uh, transformer and the current transformer uh, both have to be uh, at a regular intervals have to be monitored and uh, properly calibrated 
uh, that is very important. So, that the readings which uh, uh, this uh, equipment uh, or the information with the this uh, current transformer or voltage transformer is going to be communicated have to be accurate. That is again uh, one of the important aspects for the proper calibration has to be carried at least once in a year. So, here current transformer visual inspection is very important uh, to check oil level and also the defects uh, of possible oil leaks in the current transformer. So, again here the insulating supports have to be properly uh, checked for the dirt accumulation and uh, necessary primary or secondary connections and the conducting parts have to be uh, properly tightened and uh, know uh, where uh, uh, the loose contacts are to be uh, seen. The important point to be noted is that never open a secondary winding of a CT uh, current transformer particularly while on service. So, this is a uh, not advisable to uh, see the uh, current transformer secondary should not be open. That is one of the instructions to which should be carried out by the personnel who are attending to this uh, uh, maintenance uh, job. So, both the equipments have to be calibrated yearly once that has to be done for proper uh, information. Then we have discussed lot about the surge arrestor or a lightning arrestor and the uh, used for the uh, transmission and uh, distribution networks mainly for protection of the transformers and uh, their equipments. So, this surge arresters as mentioned earlier consists of various uh, uh, blocks of uh, zinc oxide elements which are stacked inside with a pressure relief uh, the surge counting device uh, near the uh, ground side and you have a surge counter and also the leakage current monitor which gives the information about uh, the uh, uh, for, uh, performance of this uh, uh, lightning or a surge arrestor. This is the typical uh, surge arrestors for various uh, voltage levels. You can see the grounded portion here and this is the high voltage portion with the corona control rings. So, near the grounded uh, before the grounded connection you have a counter surge counter and also a uh, uh, leakage current monitor uh, to give the information about the number of uh, uh, lightning surges which have happened over a period of time. Here again the surge arresters require a regular uh, maintenance. So, visual inspection and uh, examining of all the wiring connections which are uh, being done uh, to the arrestor and again here the uh, uh, hollow insulator bushing which uh, accommodates the surge arrestor elements uh, have to be properly uh, cleaned including the corona control rings, the metal uh, rings, uh, adjacent uh, rings which are being used for the uh, surge arrestor uh, 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 housing have to be properly cleaned again using the high voltage insulating coating uh, if necessary. And a physical uh, check for the connections that is the bus bar connections to the surge arresters is essential at a regular intervals. Uh, and uh, ground wire or the earthing wire plays a very important role in the substation uh, um, where in case of the lightning surges uh, or a lightning uh, flashes which occur uh, the proper shielding has to be uh, done so that these surges are diverted to the ground. Uh, without uh, the voltages uh, or rise in potential is seen to the other equipments which are connected. So, very important the earth wire or the ground wire. This uh, regular uh, uh, check on the grounding system is essential and uh, the arresters which are connected it is uh, shown here each phase of the uh, transmission uh, conductors are being connected with the surge arresters. So, these uh, uh, surge arresters should never be touched unless completely disconnected while uh, maintaining the ground wire connections or verifying or checking the ground wire or a shielding wires. So, surge arresters have to be properly disconnected from all the live lines and the equipment effectively uh, which are connected to ground at the line side of the arrestor. So, very important everything has to be uh, uh, earthed then uh, the maintenance has to be uh, carried out. This was a typical uh, a lightning or uh, flash which is occurring to the grounding or a shielding wire uh, which is connected in the substation. And also you see the importance of the tower footing resistance, the high footing impedance. We will be discussing about the uh, tower uh, footing uh, impedances or the, what is the minimum uh, uh, resistance which is required for the earthing or a grounding uh, in any uh, high voltage uh, substations. 
So, apart from this uh, we have uh, capacitor units uh, several units capacitor banks uh, these are very important uh, uh, components in any substation uh, very essential uh, uh, components in a substation. The capacitor banks will improve the power factor of the system uh, if the load is leading uh, it is useful in reduction particularly in the power system losses and also these are uh, used to see the uh, voltage regulation is improved. So, capacitor banks there is a certain capacitor banks are normally used to improve the quality of electrical supply and also uh, for the efficient uh, operation of uh, the electrical uh, system network. And uh, capacitor banks are typically used to reduce the over voltages uh, in the uh, substation. So, various uh, types of uh, capacitor banks are being used some may be fixed or uh, automatic again uh, depends on different types uh, and also the capacitor banks vary with the uh, type of uh, voltage levels uh, whether it is a distribution or a medium voltage or a high, high voltage uh, extra high voltage or ultra high voltage the capacitor banks are suitably uh, designed to be uh, kept in the substation. So, the types of uh, capacitor banks could be a distribution full this could again be a fixed or an automatic type uh, distribution pad type which could also be a fixed or automatic uh, substation sometimes it is a metal enclosed uh, capacitor banks are installed whether uh, uh, in any uh, required substation where it is again a fixed or an automatic substation. And some of the cases are also uh, similar to this uh, substation rack mounted capacitor units uh, this is uh, one of the example. Uh, which is used for uh, the improvement of power factor and also uh, reduction in the power system losses. So, one of the example is assembly of uh, the rack mounted units of the capacitor bank. A similar uh, examples are connected with the capacitor banks. So, several types again uh, for the distributed pole mounted you have uh, uh, arrangement of uh, the distribution system this is a metal enclosed type of capacitor banks which are arranged in a typical a substation. Uh, along with the capacitor bank you have the harmonic filters uh, in a EHV or a UHV a substation. So, these are various uh, uh, types which are uh, of capacitor banks uh, which are being used for the proper uh, correction of the power factor. So, that was about the main uh, equipments which are housed in any uh, substation very important. So, further to this uh, in any substation uh, very important because of the uh, various uh, components and the operation at very high voltage uh, levels. So, the important uh, aspect to be uh, considered is the electric and magnetic fields. So, electric and magnetic fields uh, play a vital uh, uh, importance uh, in the proper design of uh, the uh, substation uh, and also helps to see the personnel who are uh, working in uh, substation have to be uh, uh, considered uh, because of uh, the clearances and the effect uh, of the electric and magnetic fields pertaining to the health. So, this uh, is one of the concern as the voltage level uh, in any typical uh, substation goes above uh, EHV or UHV level uh, the electric and magnetic fields uh, are very important. So, proper planning and proper estimation of these fields is necessary and also the measurements is necessary to see the uh, humans are not affected uh, by the fields which are generated because of uh, uh, the high voltage uh, operations at the substations. So, several uh, mitigation uh, techniques uh, are also being uh, standardized uh, for uh, the power frequency magnetic fields uh, which are normally originated by uh, the electric uh, power systems. So, there is a, a C gray uh, working group again this is a C gray working group is the international council uh, for uh, the large high voltage systems which work towards the standardization of the equipments and uh, related to the electrical uh, very high voltage uh, aspects. So, this working group uh, C4204 has suggested some of the mitigation techniques particularly for the personnel who are working uh, in the utilities and particular to the substations and uh, the specifications uh, which are uh, 
the regulations framed the magnetic field and the electric fields have to be contained uh, so that there is no uh, harmful eff uh, effects to the humans who are working in the substations. So, where do the sources of uh, these electric and magnetic fields uh, are seen uh, particularly when the power frequency uh, levels. So, we know that again uh, going back uh, we have a generating uh, plants various type of generation we have a step up uh, transformer to transmit the voltage levels at a very high voltage. Then we uh, step down at the required levels and the from the stepping down we through the substation we try to distribute it to the local uh, requirement it could be industry it could be uh, domestic purpose. Here during this process of the uh, entire uh, process uh, the flow of uh, energy as earlier uh, mentioned uh, from the generating to the customer uh, level uh, at the power frequency uh, operating voltages could be of uh, a distribution or uh, extra high voltage or ultra high voltage. Uh, the reason here the power frequency uh, electric or a magnetic fields uh, and the sources uh, from where it is being generated and uh, the techniques uh, which have to be uh, classified and how to mitigate is very, very important uh, uh, for the utility engineers and also uh, for the personnel who are working in uh, the electricity uh, uh, organizations. So, here the power frequency magnetic field sources could be classified according to their origin. So, where do they originate that is very important it could be from the power lines which are uh, transmitting from the generating to the load centers. Uh, it could be from the underground uh, cables <coughs> or it could be from the complex sources may be from the substations any of these substations. So, the sources could be any uh, of this transmission or uh, distribution or through the substation uh, side because of the equipment because of. Uh, so, when you compare the differences uh, between the electric and magnetic fields a very important aspect how it could affect the humans particularly. Uh, you can very clearly uh, see here uh, indication uh, diagram of a human which is uh, shown here with the to the effect of electric field and to the magnetic field. Uh, it will be explained here in the following way. So, this gives the electric field lines in case you consider a residential uh, uh, house where uh, you can see how the electric field uh, lines uh, in case if the transmission a conductor is very near to the residential line. Uh, uh, residence uh, residential uh, area how the electric field lines could affect the uh, uh, residence um, and it is very clear that the electric field lines normally do not uh, penetrate inside the house, but you can see this be being the uh, magnetic fields magnetic fields uh, fro which are originating from the substation or through the transmission uh, because of high power uh, could uh, penetrate the residential house also. So, very important uh, factor uh, the sim similar uh, explanation is being given here the electric field does not penetrate the house that is to be noted. Uh, electric fields generated as a consequences are normally diverted to the earth uh, through the uh, grounding uh, arrangement. Even in case uh, the lightning strikes the transmission line which is uh, going near the uh, residential uh, area. Uh, the suitable lighting uh, rods which are uh, available say again if the house residential house of a tall structure has a lightning rod this normally is connected to the earthing uh, uh, ground where uh, the surge which is uh, comes in the contact will be diverted to the ground. So, the lightning rods uh, connected to the ground will do the diversion successfully. So, no much of harm uh, with the electric fields because of the transmission or because of the lightning aspect. In case of magnetic fields uh, you can see that magnetic field could penetrate uh, the house if it is near the vicinity of uh, uh, the site where uh, the effect of magnetic field is very high. Uh, here only certain uh, materials uh, particularly with specific uh, geometries or dedicated uh, circuit could oppose this action. Else if the materials are not capable of uh, uh, 
particularly opposing the magnetic field, then there is a likely chance of uh, the magnetic field entering the or penetrating the residential apartments in case if it is the vicinity of the magnetic field zone. So, the purpose uh, important uh, aspect, the purpose of uh, designing uh, the mitigation techniques uh, for the magnetic field uh, is to see and find out uh, what are the most appropriate uh, materials uh, which could be used uh, and uh, what are the type of uh, geometries uh, to be employed uh, to see that uh, the effect of shielding uh, for the magnetic fields could be effectively uh, carried out the very important aspect. So, magnetic fields are much more uh, um, uh, dangerous in compared to the electric fields. So, it has to be properly uh, contained and it has to be uh, suitably mitigated with the help of the available techniques. So, electric and uh, magnetic fields uh, both are invisible areas of energy. These are often uh, referred as the radiations uh, which is known as electric electro field, uh, magnetic field radiations uh, and these are associated with the use of uh, electrical power at very high uh, current ratings and sometimes could be natural and also may be due to the man made uh, uh, lighting aspects also. So, EMF or electromagnetic fields uh, are typically characterized by the wavelengths or the frequency into one of the two radioactive uh, categories which are internationally uh, categorized. Uh, two important uh, categorization where the electromagnetic fields are classified. One is the non-ionizing uh, type. So, non-ionizing uh, type is a low level radiation which is uh, generally perceived as harmless to the humans. So, the uh, magnitude of the radiation uh, which is emitting from uh, uh, this uh, category uh, which is classified in this cat, uh, uh, as a non ionizing level is not much harmful to the humans. Whereas, ionizing type the second uh, uh, category which is having a high level of radiation uh, could be a uh, uh, factor which has to be considered and where it could have the potential uh, particularly for damaging the cellular and also the DNA that is very uh, concern. So, the ionizing type of uh, magnetic fields are uh, the important uh, uh, consideration to see that it has to be contained. So, these categories have been classified as follows which is uh, shown in this uh, table. The radiation type uh, what is the non ionizing type that is the low level radiations. Then the ionizing type which is high level radiations. So, we see the definition for non ionizing is low to mid frequency radiation which is generally uh, perceived as harmless due to its lack of uh, potential it could not uh, uh, cause much of harmful to the humans as the magnitude of these radiations are very very uh, low. The forms of uh, radiation uh, could be extremely low uh, frequency it could be in the region of radio frequency uh, levels or it is because of the microwaves or because of the uh, general uh, visual lighting uh, which is uh, uh, artificially uh, which is a man made uh, arrangements. So, these all come under non ionizing uh, magnetic uh, fields again the sources could be from the microwave ovens. So, lot uh, exposure of microwave ovens is also not advisable the computers again the computers could also be a source of uh, low magnetic uh, radiations then house energy smart meters the wireless wifi networks the cell phones which are operating at uh, gigahertz or uh, very high megahertz range the bluetooth devices gigahertz range the power lines uh, and mris magnetic resonant uh, uh, imaging so these uh, could uh, be the source of uh, the non ionizing type of uh, radiations which are generally not harmful to the humans. The second category uh, which uh, is to be contained uh, could be operating or could be, do, uh, be anywhere between mid to the high frequency radiation this is a cause could be because of the high frequency radiation which can under certain circumstances 
may lead to the cellular or uh, DNA damage uh, with uh, particularly for a long exposure uh, to these uh, fields. So, uh, the magnetic fields which are uh, falling in this category, the personal are not supposed to be exposed uh, for a long period of time uh, and have to be taken pro proper uh, precautions uh, so that uh, uh, the penetration uh, could be avoided. So, what are the sources normally forms of radiations could be uh, in this category are ultraviolet uh, rays could be X rays or uh, gamma rays. So, these are some of the uh, categories or forms of radiations could be categorized in this and the source examples from where the uh, ionizing type of electromagnetic radiations could occur could be from the ultraviolet uh, exposure to the ultraviolet light for a long period of time. The X-rays which typically range from uh, 13 to 10 to the power of 16 hertz to 13 to 10 to the power of 19 hertz. So, anywhere uh, this frequency uh, range uh, where the X-rays are being taken if it is exposed for a long duration time uh, the uh, radiations could be uh, higher and also some uh, gamma rays this could again uh, be because of the gamma rays. So, the personnel should not be uh, exposed for a long duration and there have uh, been uh, internationally uh, specified values for the non ionizing and ionizing uh, type of uh, magnetic fields. Uh, you could also see uh, in uh, uh, the uh, X-ray personnel who are operating in the uh, generally using the X-ray machines in the hospitals. Uh, there could be uh, indication uh, which is being uh, put on their uh, uh, apron where it says uh, and indicates the exposure level. So, that a suitable action has to be uh, seen or is exposure limit should not cross uh, the specified uh, levels that is a very important aspect particularly for uh, people who are uh, working in the X-ray units and uh, uh, who are exposed to the ultraviolet uh, radiations. Could electromagnetic uh, fields be harmful to the human health? This is a question. Uh, it is to be known that uh, we have to understand uh, uh, whether uh, this is of a concern or a serious concern or it could be uh, not an issue. So, here during somewhere in 1990s uh, that is uh, uh, decades, two decades back most of the electromagnetic uh, field research particularly focused on extremely low frequency exposures uh, from conventional power sources, uh, power lines, electrical substations and also home appliances. So, many people who had a concern. So, can electromagnetic be harmful? Yes, uh, in some uh, studies have shown that a possible link could be established between the electromagnetic field strength and an increased risk of uh, childhood uh, leukemia. Uh, but their findings indicated that uh, such an association was uh, very weak. So, there is no proper uh, support that uh, the electromagnetic fields could be harmful. Now, in the age of uh, uh, cellular uh, telephone, uh, wireless networks, routers, portable uh, GPS uh, devices, all sources of electromagnetic uh, field radiations, the concerns uh, regarding possible uh, connections between the electromagnetic fields and the adverse health effects uh, still uh, persists among the uh, humans. Though uh, current research uh, continues to point uh, to same uh, weak association and uh, there is no concrete uh, proof that uh, the fields which are generated by these sources uh, could be harmful to the humans. But few studies have also been conducted uh, on adults. Uh, show no evidence of uh, link between the electromagnetic uh, field exposure and the adult cancers or leukemia, uh, uh, brain cancer or a breast cancer. So, there are no solid uh, uh, proofs uh, which uh, support uh, the exposure of uh, electromagnetic fields have led to this uh, uh, disease. So, nevertheless uh, very important the health standards uh, have to be followed and international health uh, standards have been recommended uh, and which are continually uh, 
and also to be educated on practical ways of uh, reducing the exposures in particular to the electromagnetic fields. So, this is very important uh, point to be noted for the personnel who are uh, uh, working in the areas where the electromagnetic uh, sources uh, have to be uh, seen that long exposure to these fields have to be contained. It is a very important aspect. right? Okay, uh, thank you, we will stop here.